Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome and thank you for joining today. My name is Tammy Zimmel, and I'm the VP of Marketing at, here at the Estimating Edge. Um, today, John Mitchell, who is one of our training and technical support specialists, will be covering the takeoff screen in version 12. Before we get started, we do have a couple housekeeping items. All of your lines have been muted, but we will answer any questions throughout the webinar, and we encourage any questions. And to ask any of them, enter them in that questions window, which you can see on the screen. And at the end of the webinar, we're going to answer any questions relevant to the entire audience so everybody can hear. Um, John, if you could flip to the next slide. Um, when you leave the webinar today, a pop-up window will open up with a three-question survey. And one of the questions is what topics you would like to see in upcoming webinars. So we would definitely love to hear your feedback. Uh, later on today, we're going to send you an email that has the recorded link and a shortcut tip sheet. And then in 2018, we're going to be hosting one webinar a month. And you can RSVP on the website by choosing webinars under the resources menu. And next month's men uh, webinar is going to be version 10, pricing and labor. And that's going to be on July 25th at 1 p.m. same time. And then in August, we're going to do version 12, pricing and labor. Um, and that's going to be on August 29th. So thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, we'll get started. Um, John, I'm going to pass it over to John Mitchell. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tammy. And hello, everyone. Welcome to the Takeoff Screen webinar. We want you to take away two things from this webinar, and the first thing we want you to take away is a knowledge of the layout of the takeoff screen. The other thing we want you to take away is a better understanding of the more common tools that you'll be using to measure in the takeoff screen. Let's get started with the layout. Over here on the left, we have the bid tree. What you see here are the pages that I've already put into the job. The main drawing canvas is right here in the middle, and these are the tools that you'll use to draw with. I call this the toolbar. Then over here to the right, you have your drawing properties buttons. You can turn them on by clicking on them and turn them off. Over here, you have a pane that is showing con area condition right now. I'll show you how to change that in a minute here. And down here, you have the calculations pane. It's got your square feet, lineal feet, and segment terminators. I'll show you how that works when we start measuring. But before we start measuring, I want to show you that you can expand these pages by clicking on the arrow next to the page. And you'll see the conditions that you've put in on that page. Now, if you're clicked on the page description, over here on the right, this page information came in. And this is where you're going to be able to work with your background image. You could actually clear the background image by clicking Clear, and it would go away without removing any of the measurements that you've already measured, if you've already measured some. And you can put the background image back by clicking on this drop-down arrow and selecting the image that you've already imported. I've got four images in there imported already, but I'll choose this one. So we're ready to start measuring. We want to click on a condition. This is an area condition. So I'm going to measure an area, but before I start measuring, it says here, scale has not been set. I'm going to set the scale. I'm going to calculate the background scale based on this known dimension. That's always a good practice to calculate the background scale as opposed to just accepting what it says on the drawing, because that could be wrong. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in on this wall. And to do that, I'm going to use my scroll wheel. I'm going to move it forward. And I made that wall bigger. So then I'm going to click on Scale down here at the bottom. I'll click Scale. And I'm going to click Calculate. Now, 
to calculate the background scale, you'll click on the two points of that length. So I'll click on the first point where that arrow meets the scale line there. And then I'll come over and click on the second point where this arrow meets this scale line. Let's see if we can get it pretty accurate there. Click. Now I'm going to put in 110 because it's a 110 foot line. So I'll say OK. And by good fortune, I hit the nail on the head. It's one inch equals four feet, which is quarter inch scale. So I'll say OK. Now down here next to the word scale, you see the actual scale. You can change that at any time, but we're going to leave it as it is. And I'm going to zoom out. Well, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just slide it up with this slider bar. And I see that I'm defaulted to be on the area measuring tool here. I know that there's a little box around the tool itself. So since I'm already on the area drawing tool, I'm ready to start drawing the area. I'm going to click on a point, click on a second point here. And now I'm getting ready to measure an arc. And an arc is based on three points. I'm going to click the first point. Then I'll click the second point. And interestingly, it doesn't need to be right at the center of that arc. It can be off center. And then the third point is right here. Now, I could come over to the toolbar. There's a tool for convert to arc right about here. But I'm going to use a shortcut key. And that shortcut key is the letter K to convert to arc. OK, I want to slide down a little bit, or I'm going to zoom out a little just to get a better view here. And I'm going to click this point and this point. Now, with an area, when you're measuring an area, you don't want to go all the way back to the starting point where you, you clicked first. I just want to click Enter, and that accepted my area. Down here on the calculations pane, you see that I have 6,820 square feet and some change, and 334 lineal feet and five segment terminators. That's what that ST is, segment terminators. So what I'm going to do now is cut out a little area from the area that I've drawn. So I'm going to click the deduct tool here. And I want a nice, neat square or rectangle. So what I'm going to do is click the ortho button. Ortho lets me draw lines that are straight up and down or perfectly horizontal. And I'm going to click this point, but I'm not going to click Enter just yet because I want you to look back down at the calculations pane and remember that the square foot is 6,820. The lineal feet is 334 lineal feet of perimeter and five segment terminators. When I do click Enter, the square feet will go down, the lineal feet will go up, and the segment terminators will change also. And you see that now. The square feet went down to 6179, lineal feet of perimeter 441, and segment terminators are at 9. This is the current shape, this cutout that I just did. So the current uh, dimensions are this square feet is negative 640 for the cutout. 107 lineal feet and four segment terminators. Now I can move this cutout if I want to by clicking the select button. You'll be clicking the select button a lot. So I'm just going to drag it. I'm holding down the left mouse button and I'm going to let go. So I've moved it. Now I can show the dimensions on the shape that I've just drawn by coming up here and clicking measurement or measurements there. And so it shows the measurements of the area. I'm still on select. I want to drag it down just a little. Whoops, I drug, drug the whole area. I want to drag just this area down just a little to get, 
get it right there. Because the next tool I'm going to show you is called the measured line tool. Let me turn the measurements off here. And I'm going to go to the measured line tool. That's this tool right here. And I'm going to click this point here and then this point. It, it shows me the measurement of that line, but it doesn't add any lineal feet to the lineal feet I already have. It's not going to add anything. So I'm going to zoom in a little so I can see that uh, dimension there. You can make that label, the dimension, bigger by coming up here and uh, just increasing the size. And you see that this measured line is segmented. There are four evenly spaced segments. There's one, two, three, and four. We can change the number of segments up here. I can just change the number. It is now six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. That should do it for the area drawing. We'll now move on to a lineal foot condition. And to do that, I'll change the condition to a length condition. You see that it's defaulted to be on the line tool here. That's a continuous line. I'll draw a continuous line. I'll start here, click here, and click here. And then I'm going to tap on the Enter button. And I want to show you another tool here we call Mirror Horizontal. It mirrored this. So I want to select this line right here. I'm going to click the select button, and I'm holding down the left mouse button, and I'm going to drag this thing over to this side, and then I'm going to click Enter again. So now I want to continue on drawing uh, this wall here, and I'm going to click the Continuous Line tool again, and uh, I want to snap to this point. And, and to this point. So I'm going to click the snap button and I don't want ortho on right now but uh, I'm snapping to that point. I'll click it then I'll click my second point of the arc and the third point of the arc and I'm going to tap on the K on the keyboard and it fills in the arc and I can click OK. Now I can put this line in by choosing, I, I could do it with the continuous line tool, but I want to show you the segmented line tool, and that will allow me to just click two points, and enter has already been taken. I don't need to hit enter again. Now I'm going to zoom in on uh, the measured line that was in the previous condition, and since I have the snap button on right here, it will snap to the points in the segmented line here. So I could, I'm already on the uh, segmented line tool, I could draw, let me draw a line here, just I'll try to make it perfectly vertical, like there. So there's a line, I'm going to click enter. Now I can come up and click on the Replicate button if I want to, to replicate that image and put it right on the Segment Terminator, okay? Or not Segment Terminator, but the, the point differentiates the segments there. And I'll click Enter. And I want to get rid of that replication, so I'm just going to click uh, the Line Drawing Tool and the replication goes away. Okay, let me zoom back out. And I want to show you now uh, another tool that we call X-Ray. You see on the background image, I, I can't really see what these symbols are too well because the, background, uh, the uh, fill pattern on the area is just too opaque. I can't see through it, so I'm going to click X-Ray here. And you can see that I can see right through the fill pattern, so I know what that little symbol is. 
what it's not doing, it's not seeing through the line that I've drawn here, through this wall. So I'm going to click X-ray one more time, and you see that it goes brighter green. So now I can see through the wall and the fill pattern. Okay, so that should take care of the length drawing tools. Let's go to a count. With a count, you're not really measuring, you're just counting. Let me turn X-ray off. And I don't need snap on. So with a count, you're just counting. I'll put, uh, I'll count right there and a count right here. The size of that count doesn't indicate how much material and labor you're putting in for that count. It's just a visual symbol. Decrease the size right here. We can actually change the symbol if we want to. That X is pretty uh, not easy to see. And you can change the color. You get this nice palette. I'm going to change it to a purpley color here. And you can increase the opacity so that it's opaque. It's no longer see-through. Okay, so let's change this size to something really small, like a 25, and click Enter. There you go. It's a nice small little mark. Okay, we're going to move on to the next page. And this is what we call field sketch here at the edge. It's, it's where someone comes back from the field and they've sketched out um, a drawing and you want to be able to transfer that sketch that they've drawn out into the edge. So I'm going to collapse this page and expand this page for the field sketch and I'm going to click the area condition that got rid of page one. You don't even see it anymore. So here in a field sketch, we can just click scale and then click the drop down and choose whichever scale we like. And I like quarter inch, so I'm going to take that and click OK. And there's the scale. Now there are really, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, but there are three ways to measure in a field sketch. The first way I want to show you here is by using a grid. So I'm going to click the grid button. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Now, we don't know how far apart these lines of this, this, this grid are. And we want to know how far apart they are. So there's a drop down here next to the grid button that shows you that it's 60 by 60 inches or five feet by five feet. We could we could easily just change that to 120 by 120 if we wanted to be 10 by 10, but I'm going to leave it at five by five. You also see I'm not snapping to the grid lines and I want to, so I'm going to turn snap on. So now we are snapping to those grid points where they intersect. And, you know, I also want to have ortho on just so it'll be a nice, clean rectangle and uh, I'm going to click the first one and I this should be five feet but we want to be sure so there's a tape measure down at the bottom you see where these numbers are changing down here I'm going to come back up to here to where I clicked All right, let me click backspace and then I'll click and you can see down on the tape measure five feet 10 feet 15 feet I can click there and go down 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and come back over here. And now I have a nice clean rectangle, and I know what the measurements are. I'm going to click Enter, and that sets my drawing. Another way to draw is to turn the grid off. I'm going to leave ortho and might as well leave snap on also, but uh, I'm going to click here. I, I want to be able to see, I, I don't want to have to look down at the tape measure to see how far I've gone. 
So what I'm going to do is turn this HUD on. That stands for Heads Up Display. That'll give the uh, measurements, uh, put them right here in my line of sight. So what I'm going to do is, um, oh, I'm also going to do something else. I'm going to come over here to Tape Increment. And I'm going to click the drop down next to Tape Increment. And I'm going to change it to 12 inches so that it will increment in nice one foot increments here. So you can see it. See that two feet, three, four, five. I'm going to come all the way over to like maybe uh, 50 feet here. 50. I know I've gone 50. I've clicked on it. Now I'm coming down and I'll go to 50. And I'll come left and go to 50 and click there. And I'll click Enter. So I know that what I've drawn, I've drawn the exact measurements that I wanted. Okay. A third way of drawing, let me show you. I'll scroll down a little bit here. And I'm going to click on this point. And when I click, you see over here on this pane on the right, this is what we call manual draw. These arrows here are a visual representation of your number pad on the right side of your keyboard. On the top, of, on the top row of um, the number pad, you have the numbers 7, 8, and 9 there. Then you have 4, 5, and 6, and 1, 2, and 3. Now, I've already clicked one point. What I can do, if I want to go over uh, 50 feet, I can just put 50 in here, 50, and I can click on this arrow, and it goes 50 feet to the right. If I want to go down by 50, I can click this button, and it goes down. If I want to go left by 25, I change the number to 25. and go left, then go up by 25, and uh, left again by 25. So that's another way to draw. Now I'm going to click the Enter button again, and it will set that shape. That uh, visual representation of the uh, number pad on the right can also be done by using your keyboard. I'm going to click here, and I'll show you what I mean. You might look at your keyboard, and the number 8 on the number pad on the right might have an up arrow on it. Mine does. The, the number 6 has a, a right arrow. The number 2 has a down arrow, and the number 4 has a left arrow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the control button down on my keyboard right now, and I'm going to click the number 6 on my number pad on the right here. And then I'm going to put in 25. I just typed the numbers 25 and I'm going to click enter now. And it went 25 feet to the right. If I hold down the control button again and then click the number 2 on the number pad on the right and then I let go of the control button and I type in 25 and click Enter, it goes down by 25. And I'll hold down Control and hit the number 4 on the number pad and go left by 25 and hit Enter. And so you can use the manual draw by using your keyboard. Pretty cool. All right. So... That takes care of the area in a field sketch. Uh, let's move on to a lineal foot condition or a length condition. Let me turn some of these buttons off. OK. So we're going to move down to the length condition. Now, what you're seeing is a grayed out version. This is not the current condition. You're seeing the area condition here. I'm going to snap 
to the, the points on the area condition, I want to click Snap. I'm on the Length Drawing Tool, or the Continuous Line Drawing Tool, I should say. And I'm going to click here, and I'm going to snap to here and click, and I'll snap to there, and I'll snap to there, and there, and there, and then I'm going to click Enter. Now I'm going to scroll up a little bit, and I'm going to change to this segmented line tool and snap there and there. I don't need to hit Enter on the segmented line tool. I can also come up here and click Select and click on the line and drag that line away from it. If I, I'm still on Select, so if I click on this line right here, it's going to take that entire continuous line shape when I move it. Now, you might have moved a continuous line shape and you didn't want to move the entire shape. You might have just wanted to move one of these lines. You can do that. If you right click on the line and click on convert to segments, converts all the lines to segments. If you click off of there one time and then choose a line that you want to pull out, let's say we want to pull this line out, we click on it and then we can just pull it out. We can do the same with any one of those lines. Okay. So there you have the length drawing tool. There is another, there is another tool in length drawing that we call OCL. Uh, which stands for On Center Length or On Center Layout. I like to call it On Center Length. You can click on this tool right here. I'll show you how to, to do it um, using these other conditions that I've already created. Um, for roofers, they might have um, batten strips that come off the side of the wall uh, that they call fingers and for interior framers you might use the on center length for floor joists so let me show you how to do fingers with the on center length tool i'm going to click this condition the first thing you noticed is that this uh, red message came up and says centers must have a length entered which means that we don't know how far apart these batten strips are spaced just yet. The edge doesn't know. A, a common spacing would be 10 feet, so we need to put it in over here. And what I'm going to do is click here and put in 120. That's 120 inches or 10 feet. They're commonly spaced by 10 feet apart. So I'll click Apply. What we also know about fingers is you come from the wall in a certain distance. Uh, the edge doesn't know how far you want to come in just yet. I can, I can designate that length by coming up to take, tape increment and I'll click custom and change this to 120 inches or 10 feet. And then I'm going to click the drop down. I'm going to click ortho so it's nice and neat again. And I'm ready to measure my battens or to put in my battens with the on center length tool. So I'm going to snap to this point. Now, this is the line that the battens will be perpendicular to. So I'm going to click over here. And then I'm going to come in, and since I designated a tape increment of 10 feet, it just jumped straight to 10 feet, and I can click. And there are my battens. If I want to draw battens on this side, I'll need to click the batten tool, I mean the on center length tool again. The tape increment should still be on 120 inches, and the center is on 120 inches. So I'm going to click here and here, and the tape increment will go straight to 10 feet, and I'll click it, and there are my fingers on the other side, the batten strips. 
easy. Okay, let me show you how to do the same thing with uh, floor joists. I'll click this floor joist condition. Now, since I clicked to a new condition, the when I click the on center length tool, the centers is back at zero. That's because I'm on a new condition. So I will need to designate how far apart we want these floor joists. I'm going to go two feet or 24 inches. I don't want them to go over 10 feet. So I'm going to change it from custom 120 to 12 inches, one foot increments. And I'll click there to accept it. So now I'm snapping to here. And here, this is the perpendicular line that will be perpendicular to, or the joists will be perpendicular to this line. So I'm just going to come over to here, and boom, there are my floor joists. Now, the lines that I've drawn here for the floor joists, down here in the lineal foot tells you 210 lineal feet. That means you have 210 lineal feet of floor joists. Okay, that should be good for the field sketch. Let me just show you a couple more things here. One of them in this completed takeoff, I'll collapse the field sketch and expand this completed takeoff and click on the first condition. You see here on this first condition, I've measured it, and all we're seeing is the current condition being measured. I don't see the non-current conditions. All these other conditions that I've already measured are non-current. They're grayed out. I want to see the grayed out non-current conditions, so I'll click this button we have called gray non-current. Non click, and there you see all of your conditions. If there is a condition that you want to turn off, you don't want it to be part of the job, you can just unfill that checkbox right there, and that condition is now turned off. Okay, that should do it for the takeoff screen webinar. I'm going to pass it over to Tammy. Thank you, John. Um, we don't have any questions today, but um, for our audience, if you do it in the future, please uh, give us a call. We are here to help you. Um, thanks for attending the webinar today. Sorry we ran over a little bit longer, but... Um, Thank you, John, for showing us all of the details for the takeoff. And um, everybody, just have a great day. Thank you so much for joining.